You know, you want jokes and lightness and happiness? You can go to Marvel. That's what Marvel's for. DC is doing something different, okay? And they should be applauded for that. The fact that they're playing Marvel Avengers catch-up is what ruined the movie. They're trying to accomplish too much with one movie. Just take it DC. Take it slow. Take it slow. Go one step at a time, okay? The montage where Superman's saving all the people and pulling the big ship on the chain uh, while they're playing news recordings about, like, is he a god? Is he an alien? How do we deal with him? That was a really mature scene. And I really like the scene with Jonathan Kent on the little Mount Everest. And the point was, I thought I was a hero and I still got people killed, okay? So he's just making Clark think about it like this isn't as black and white as it looks. And, like, you need to think about the collateral damage of decisions you might make. And come on. Come on. That fight... That fight between Batman and Superman. That's it's in the rain and his eyes are glowing and it's dark and it's just like <laughs> Boom! Robot Batman armor. That was like up here good. Which is why it's so frustrating that it wasn't like the back half of the movie. You know what? You can keep DC. You can keep the dream sequences. I mean, in the theoretical universe where I'm telling them how to make this movie. You can keep the dream sequences. That thing with the flash, the time flashpoint paradox or whatever it is. And the little Mad Max Fury Road Batman Apocalypse Desert fight thing. Those are your illusions that you may have to future Justice League. And it could be like, what was that? I don't know. Will be explained. Whereas everything else in that movie is only Batman and Superman. That would have been great. But after Batman wipes out the warehouse, that's like the last good scene in the movie. That's where the movie essentially ends and just takes a tank. So when Doomsday shows up, Doomsday is not a compelling villain because Doomsday is Zod minus his personality with the same powers plus lightning explosions. And the only cool thing about that fight is Wonder Woman, admittedly. Wonder Woman's- alright, Wonder Woman though? Wonder Woman's physical acting is very good, like her facial expressions and when she like smiles after she gets thrown and she like jumps back into the fray, her, her weapons can hit um, Kryptonian flesh because they are magically imbued. And she's got it in the lasso and with her um, brace blitz things and it's like woom 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 And then it shows her face and it's like da -de -de -de. That was cool, that was a great musical cue. Why couldn't we have saved that for the Wonder Woman movie? This Doomsday fight is just not a very entertaining fight. Especially comparatively to the freaking amazing Dark Knight Returns Batman v Superman fight. It was awesome! But Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's freaking accent. I, she's from Amazon, so maybe she's supposed to have an accent. But it feels like some of her lines are American and the rest she just gives up on the accent. So if she's supposed to have an accent because that's the character, then fine, but I don't think that's the case. It's like, for goodness sakes, are there not 200 other equally as attractive actresses who are, you know, like, bigger and bulkier, because everyone was complaining that she was a twig, who can actually speak English? Her accent kills me! I did like in the Doomsday fight how, like, the moment he shows up, the government's like, nuke him, nuke him, nuke him. Like, he's high enough without casualties, just nuke him. We saw Man of Steel. That's not happening again. And that other guy's like, there will be one casualty, sir. Superman. And they're just like... He's like, thank you, United States government, for acting reasonably. And then in addition to all of that, they crime the death of Superman in here. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. The scene itself, like, after he's dead, and the whole, like, you, like, look around you if you seek his monument thing, and the music that swells up, and the funeral, like, it's, it's a well-done scene. It's just way too early for it to mean anything. How many of you shed a tear when Superman died? I didn't. I didn't care. It's like, you can't kill him off in the second movie when we know he's just gonna come back for the Justice League. That whole scene would have meant a lot more if you had held it at, like, the end of the DC Universe. Like, we've been through all these adventures together, and now my good friend Clark, oh, I'm gonna miss him. And if, you know, he'd actually stay dead. Fake-out deaths are the holocaust of the superhero films industry, and they have got to stop. And if you have to kill him off, at least let him stay dead for the end of the movie. And it's gracious. But then he comes back from the dead and you see the particles. Okay, so he's not dead. So you just wasted a half hour of our time for that first viewing. And when we rewatch the movie, because I'm buying it on Blu-ray because it's still, overall, very cool movie. I'm, that scene's gonna waste my time because I already know it doesn't happen. And the only purpose it serves is, oh, is he alive or isn't he? So once you already know, you don't care. So those are my super long explained thoughts on Batman v Superman. The final score is still gonna be surprisingly high given all the negatives I get. It's gonna get an eight. Because the cool stuff, when the cool stuff is happening, is really, really freaking cool. My score isn't based on, like, 
an alternate future what it could have been. It's based on what the movie was. I just, like everyone else, just wish they had focused on Batman and Superman, kind of like, you know, the title of the movie. So admit to yourself, it's a disappointment, but it's still good, okay? I think we can all agree on that, right? Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. I'm Wesley Tomsky, goodbye, and God bless.